Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video. So in this today's video, we'll be solving the problem sum of all divisors from 1 to n. Uh, it's an easy level problem and it is a problem of the day on Geeks for Geeks and uh, the company tags are not available. So the question says, given a positive integer n, the task is to find the value of sigma i equal to 1 to n f of i, where the function f of i for the number i is defined as the sum of all divisors of i. So that's pretty straightforward. So <clears throat> there are one examples given to us and the expected time complexity is O of n and the auxiliary space is O of 1. So it's better if you don't use any data structure and complete this in a one iteration O of n. So you can even see the code on the compiler. So we'll go in brief like what are, uh, we'll see the explanation of the sample cases and as well as the approach, how do we figure it out? So it's a very easy question to be honest. But uh, thing is, it's about how are you decoding the approach? So that is much more fantastic then uh, just uh, judging the you know uh, hard difficulty level of the problem so uh, we'll be uh, examining the examples first the sample test cases that has been given so n equal to 4 and 15 so n equal to 4 let me write this out here so n equal to 4 and <clears throat> you need to start from all the numbers so what is the function says sigma i equal to 1 to n f of i okay so sigma i equal to 1 to n f of i so uh, there is a case of i equal to 1, i equal to 1, i equal to 2, and i equal to 3, and i equal to 4. All right. So these are the four cases. So I'll just erase this out here. And out of these four cases, what is the what are the divisors of i equal to 1? Just 1. What are the divisors of i equal to 2? 1 and 2. What are the divisors of i equal to 3? 1 and 3. What are the divisors of i equal to 4? 1, 2, 4. All right. So what is the sum now? Let us assume the answer variable. Answer variable uh, is what we'll be returning. So first we'll be counting the number of ones. How many ones are there? One, 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 one. So four ones are there. So the contribution is four times one. Okay. Four times one. And then the second contribution is from twos. So how many twos are there? How many twos are there? One and two. All right. So there are two number of twos. So two into two and then the contribution comes from 3 so answer plus equal to number of threes how many number of threes are there so that is uh, let me use a different thing now um yeah so there is only one number of uh, one three all right so in that case the answer would be uh, like the addition to the answer would be one times three and the final thing number of fours so answer plus equal to how many number of fours are there so it's pretty straightforward uh, so it's just uh, let me use uh, yeah this is fine uh, okay, it's not uh, visible. So only one four, right? All right. So only one four. So in that case, uh, one times four. Okay. So what is this answer here? It is four. It is four plus four. That is eight. And it is eight plus three. That is uh, eleven. And here eleven plus four, fifteen. So answer is fifteen. So let us uh, check it out here. Yes, we have the same answer, fifteen. So we are done with four. So this is what you need to do. You need to examine all the numbers less than or equal to the n that has been given. So this is the value of n. So less than or equal to n, that is one, two, three, four. You need to examine all these four numbers. And for each number, you need to find the divisors, exact divisors, and add it to the sum. All right, add it to the sum and return the final sum. That's it. And let us even take another example as well. So this is for four. Uh, let me clear this out. Uh, okay. So this, uh, this is done. So now n equal to 5. Let us take the case of n equal to 5. So n equal to 5 in the sense, i equal to 1, uh, i equal to 2, i equal to 3, i equal to 4, and i equal to 5. Less than or equal to as well. So we need to take all the fine numbers. So 1, so only 1, 2, 1 and 2. 1 and 2 are the divisors of 2. Uh, 3, coming to 3. What is What are the divisors of uh, i equal to 3? 1 and 3. Divisors of i equal to 4, uh, 1, 2, 4. And divisors of i equal to 5, just 1 and 5. All right. So <clears throat> in this case, what's the contribution of answer? 
so answer plus equals to number of times one is being uh, uh, like one is there actually so there are five inst instances of five uh, sorry one right there are five instances of one so the answer would be ans five times one now come to the two come uh, how many uh, instances of two are there one two so there are two number of twos so for the contribution of answer there would be two number of twos and now coming to threes how many threes are there only just uh, there is only one three so answer plus equal to one times three all right and now coming to four how many fours are there just one four so answer would be answer plus equals to uh, one times four all right and then finally how many fives are there just one five uh, okay so just one five so answer plus equals to answer plus equals to one times five. that's it so what is the, the final answer this is five and when we add four to five we have nine and when we have three to nine add three to nine we have twelve and when we add four to twelve we have sixteen and then when we add five to sixteen we have twenty one let me check the answer yes we have same okay so we have the same answer 21 so all right so we have got this uh, thing like the conventional approach i mean we have not decoded the approach yet but we have just implemented the thing that has been asked to us like the question they have asked us to find sigma i equal to 1 to n f of i so we have understood what is the function of i and then we are even summing up summing, summing it up and then we are written it all right so now what must be the approach what must be the approach of solving this question so there are various approaches the very first approach that you could think of is uh, storing the divisors of all the numbers from i equal to 1 to n and then adding them up all right and then adding them up so for example i'll be storing the divisors of i equal to 1 i equal to 2 i equal to 3 i equal to 4 i equal to 5 and then i'll have run a, again uh, another loop uh, to sum up all these values so this is one of the approach and uh, this is obviously a brute force sort of technique and not an optimal approach at all all right so what could be an op optimal approach so <clears throat> as you can see the numbers if you can see the numbers thoroughly it's 5 times 1 so why are we multiplying 1 with 5 because there are 5 instances where we could find 5 where we could find 5 but why are we finding ones for five times? Why are we finding ones for five times? Because one is such a number that is dividing the numbers that are less than or equal to five for five times. All right, getting my point. So what are the numbers that we need to take? So n is five. So what are the numbers that we need to deal with? One, two, three, four, five. And one is repeating. Uh, uh, these are five numbers, right? Because n equal to five, there would be five numbers. And i equal to one is being repeated for five times. Why is this? So, because 1 is dividing 1, 1 is uh, dividing 1, 1 is dividing 2, 1 is dividing 3, 1 is dividing 4, 1 is dividing 5. Okay, let me write this uh, much more in a clear fashion so that it is uh, clearly seen to you people. Um, okay, so I'll just put this aside. Okay, fine. So, let's put this here and uh, fine. 1 times 3, all right. So, n equal to n equal to 5 so that's uh, this means 1 2 3 4 and 5 right so let me take the very first case what is the very first case i equal to 1 so what does that divide it divides 1 it divides 2 it divides 3 it divides 4 it divides 5 take i equal to 2 what does it divide it divides 2 it divides 4 what does i equal to 3 divide it just divides 3 what does i equal to 4 divides it divides just 4 what does i equal to 5 divides it's just it, it just divides 5 so this is uh, this is uh, one uh, these are five uh, total five numbers these are total two numbers this is only one number this is only one number this is only one number this is what we are multiplying with respectively so five times one is five two times two two times two one times three one times three one times four one times four one times five one times five and finally we are adding all those things and we are getting the answer, final answer it's 21 this that's it that's what we are doing so practically what the thing that we are doing is we are just checking out those numbers that can be successfully divided by two or uh, uh, sorry successfully divided by i all right successfully divided by how many numbers are there how many instances are there such that that particular i can successfully divide that number i equal to 2 when we take i equal to 2 we find two numbers that are less than or less than or equal to 5 what are those 2 and 4 that can be successfully divided by 2 so there are two instances when 2 is going to be contributed to our final answer 
Coming to i equal to 3, we only find one case where i 3 divides successfully uh, uh, a number. What do you mean by successfully dividing? The remainder must be 0 on divide on the division. All right. So there is only one instance. What is that instance? i equal to 3 in 3. 3 is the number on which if we divide i equal to 3, we get the remainder as 0. So it successfully divides and it's the only case. Same is the case with i equal to 4 and i equal to 5. But coming to i equal to 1, 1 can divide 1, 1 can divide 2, 1 can divide 3, 1 can divide 4, 1 can divide Five. all of these can be successfully divided so that is the reason we have got five instances of uh, one all right so that is how we need to do so we are actually checking out the proper instances of each number dividing a particular uh, dividing any number less than or equal to five from i equal to one to n yeah, that's it that's a simple bottom line of this uh, approach all right i hope you people understood so if i take a number so if i run a loop i'll be checking if that particular number divides in all right if it particularly divides in then there is a <clears throat> there are equal instances of it so if we take n equal to 4 uh, or maybe we can just like this is the code so before we can uh, proceed further we can even do just an, another iteration uh, uh, sorry another uh, case so n equal to 6 i equal to 1 i equal to 2 uh, just a simple thing so that you people uh, will be out of any doubts i equal to 4 i equal to 5 and i equal to 6 all right i equal to 6 so in this case in this case we have 1 in this case we have uh, 1 comma 2 in this case we have 1 comma 3 in this case we have 1 comma 2 comma 4 in this case we have 1 comma 5 and in this case we have 1 comma 2 comma uh, 6 uh, sorry we have 3 so 3 comma 6 all right so taking the consideration a case of i equal to 1 so in this case uh, how many ones are there total six ones so one into six all right so taking the case of i equal to two how many twos are there there are one two second two and third two so three times two all right three times uh, uh like write this properly two uh, like uh, okay let me erase this part so it's first the frequency and then uh, uh, the number it's for the better clarity six times one and uh, three times two all right so two is actually successfully dividing the number two is actually successfully dividing the number n equal to six all right n equal to six so the two will be properly distributed such that there are e uh, if we sum them up if we sum up the to uh, sum them uh, sum the total instances of two we would be getting n right we will be getting n and i equal to three i equal to three also successfully divide six so that is the reason we have one three two three and uh, 2 times 3 this is also 6 this is also 6 this is also 6 all right and taking i equal to 4 this does not divide n equal to 6 successfully so there might be only one uh, 6 divided by n instance i instances okay so how many instances are there there is only one instance of 4 so this is basically nothing but 6 by 4 that is equal to 1 all right and uh, taking the case of i equal to 5 there is only one instance again so that is 6 by 5 that is 1 and taking i equal to 6, 6 divide 6 successfully. So that is the reason we have one instance and the sum it's going to, uh, you know, contribute would be 6. So here also the sum is, sorry, here the sum is uh, 4, uh, sum is 4 and here the sum is 5, all right, here the sum is 5. So if a number is actually successfully dividing the n, okay, i equal to 1 divides 6, i equal to 2 divides 6, i equal to uh, 3 divides 6, i equal to 6 divides 6 successfully. So in that case, their contribution would be equal, all right, their contribution would be, I uh, mean, their contribution will lead to n, will lead to n, this contribution is n, this contribution is n, this contribution is n, this contribution is n. But for the other numbers, i equal to 4, the contribution is only 4, for i equal to 5, the contribution is only 5, but for i equal to 1, 2, 3, 6, the contribution is 6, all right. So that is what I am saying. So if a number successfully divides the n that has been given, then the contribution of from that number would be n, n itself. If it's not if it's not uh, actually uh, perfectly dividing, then its number of times it's being repeated times that particular number. That gives That is the contribution from that particular number, all right. So I hope you people understood. So that this is the code, long, long answer equal to 0 for int i equal to 1, i less than or equal to n, i plus plus. If that particular number is divisible by uh, if n is divisible by that particular number then we contribute uh, n to the answer if not we contribute i times that like the particular times uh, into the number of times it's being uh, uh, there in less than or equal to n so there are six numbers in that six numbers n divided by i so if we take i equal to 4 so 6 by 4 that is only one instance we get uh, 4 so the contribution is 4 times 1 that is equal to 4 same is the case with 5 5 times 1 which is equal to 5 so that's it so we'll be adding to the sum and we'll be writing the answer that's it so i hope you people understood uh, the logic uh, sorry 
i hope you people understood the logic behind this problem it's pretty simple it's just a simple observation all right and uh, for your reference we'll even uh, submit the code and check um it's being submitted i guess yes and uh, let's wait for the evaluation to be done and yes it's submitted so for your reference we are even uh, posting the codes in c++ java and python this is c++ and even java and python and we are uh, attesting those repository uh, like the file links in the description you can directly check that out there so thank you for watching stay tuned